In Launch Sculptress, it will look something like this. On the FabLab computers, we've adjusted the user interface to make it a little bit easier to see. Don't worry if yours looks slightly different than this, they still operate generally the same. Uh, in Sculptress, by default, you get a digital lump of clay. It looks like this, it's a sphere, and you can rotate this sphere by right-clicking and holding down on it. I'm gonna make some bumps on the surface so you can sort of see as I rotate. I'm just right-clicking with my mouse and holding down. Uh, you can also do this on a trace pad. If you have the Mac two-button finger uh, right-click setup, that might be a little bit difficult. You may wanna go into your trace pad settings and adjust that a little bit. Uh, and as you can see, you can use a variety of different tools to contour and sculpt the surface of an object. Uh, and th this is uh, by default a fairly light modification, so I'm using the draw tool right now. Uh, but you can use all kinds of different tools, and I can you can see I'm making this kind of like brain-like looking thing, just kind of messing around like this. Uh, and just like in Tinkercad or any other 3D rendering program, we want to be constantly looking at our object from many different angles to better understand what it looks like as we sculpt it. Now there are a variety of tools we can use here. You notice there's a crease tool on the upper left, and this does pretty much what you expect. Um, now, as I use my crease tool, you can see it creases a little bit, but I don't really get a lot of effect. So if I want to make a bigger and better effect with that, there are these sliders here for strength and size. So I can crank my size up a little bit and my strength up a little bit. And now let's try. Look at that. Now I'm doing much deeper and more substantive creases. You can see how that's punching in the side of our sphere. And so the, 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 be careful with these because if you turn these up too high, you can really mess up your object. Uh, but that's okay, you can always start over if that happens. Just, just be aware that they can have powerful effects. Uh, there's some other options here. We can flatten something that we've already made. Now this doesn't put it back to how it originally was. You can see how it's just flattening the plane relative to how you're sculpting on top of it. So this is kind of shearing it off like a plateau. Uh, we have some other options here. Uh, the ability to smooth something over. If I want to smooth these areas that have been sculpted some, uh, you can imagine if we were working with a model that had been imported that had been damaged, this is actually one of the tools that is the most important, is that we can smooth over parts that are scraggly or difficult. And we have inflate and pinch and some others. But the absolute favorite tool that you can see on the FabLab computers is outlined in green here in the upper right, is, or I'm sorry, the upper left, is the grab tool. And if you select that, make sure, see this global option here? There's this little teeny light box or light dot next to it. If that global light is lit up, this tool will not work the way you want it to do. So make sure it is off like this. There's no light lit up. See, it looks like this. If that's lit up, you don't want that. Turn that off and select the grab tool. And this will allow you to grab parts of your, your object here. And you can really do some substantive sculpting with this. Look at how much that it's coming out. And I can increase my size even to really totally pull the object apart and sculpt it in very substantive ways. So this is one of the most useful tools within this program to be able to sculpt a three-dimensional shape. And you can kind of get a sense of how I might use this program here, right? Is that th this is very much the opposite or very different than Tinkercad where you're working with these easily defined, you know, single, few, very few point kinds of objects uh, where you can draw cubes and, you know, cylinders and so on. And in this, I can make these very interesting kind of concave, organic-like looking things uh, that might be really useful if I was going to try to model a heart or a face or, uh, you know, something else like a spaceship or a shoe. And uh, you can always undo something. So if I like, you know, mess with this a lot and I don't like what I just did, I can always do Control Z to put it back. And there are some options that may on your computer be on by default. So one of them, for instance, is symmetry. Now, if I hit this, it's going to automatically try to mirror both sides of this object. And you can see there now, if I draw on one side of it, it's going to make the other side do the same thing. And so this is looking kind of like a vertebrae or something now. Um, and so that's kind of useful sometimes. Now, if you turn that off, it's going to lose the symmetry. And again, you know, I can then start sweeping this over to the side and it will be unique however I do it. Some other options, you can turn on wireframe and you can actually see the mesh. Once again, this is how 3D files are actually made. There's lots and lots of points that form triangles. And this is the mesh of the surface of the file. And you can see this is not super detailed, however, uh, somewhere in here, there's a detail option. I don't know where it is exactly. You can add a lot of detail to objects, and uh, that's that's one way you can make this mesh much more complicated. It also can be a problem if you do that. Uh, up here, I'm sorry, the detail button is a slider, um, and so you can do that with some of the tools. Now, if you screw this up enough that you want to start over, you can go ahead and hit this red circle thing that says new sphere, and if you hit that, you have options. You can either add another sphere 
or you can start over with an entirely new scene. So if I do a new scene, you can see my changes are lost and here, once again, I have a brand new sphere to start with. And so this is really helpful. If you mess up, you can just start over. Now, if you make an object that is too complicated, you will get the program to crash. It will try to auto recover your work. So that's one of the nice things about it. It is still kind of a, you know, it's an alpha, which means it's in test phase. So it's not totally perfect, but they try. Uh, some other things that might matter is almost any tool you can invert. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the draw tool and I'm gonna select the invert. Now these buttons are really small. It's these little teeny dots right next to the text there that turn these on and off. So I can turn on the invert button and now you can see, I'm gonna turn up the size and strength on this a little bit. Uh, this is instead of drawing on the outside, it's kind of you know cutting into the shape. And this is similar to the crease tool. It's just doing it at a different rate and with a different method. And so you can, in a sense, take any tool and do that invert thing. Now, invert can be dangerous, however, because it does make the mesh a lot more complicated. So if you invert too much, you could crash this, uh, if you, especially if you fold the object on top of itself many times. A few other notable things is you can save your work if you want to, like any other program. And then you can also open existing work that you've already made. Uh, one of the other cool things is you can import files. So if you've made something in Tinkercad, you can import it. However, there's an additional step. If you want to do that, you have to open up something called NetFab, a program called NetFab. And we can go search for this, NetFab. Here we go. This program is free and they have an online version. Uh, you can open up any .stl, .stl 3D file in NetFab and right click on that file and go to export it as a obj file and so they have a, a free trial here and they have an online version if you actually sign up i don't think it's subscribed there's some other place that we can actually it looks like it may maybe you just use your autodesk account and you can log in and convert it now, there are other programs that you might use to convert things as well so but anyway you can import any kind of obj file in here and actually start to sculpt it if you try to import it and get an error about complexity that probably means the file that you're trying to import is too complicated with too many triangles uh, this happens typically on 3d scan files something out of tinkercad typically is not too complicated and you should be able to work with that just fine just a few other things you can do so you can see over here there's this new plane option if i go to new plane i can make an entirely new sphene and here I have a flat plane and you can see this, this could be used for all kinds of different things. I could make, you know, you could imagine I might be doing a landscape. So this is a, like, this looks like a mountain. I'm going to turn off the invert button, invert button or option there and make sort of a crease as if it were a river. And then if I wanted to maybe draw some mountains, a cool way you can do that is instead of, you know, these don't look like very convincing mountains, right? Uh, but a way you can do that is you can go here and assign a brush. And uh, let's see if I can go find a brush under, let's see, software. I'm going to go up a level here. We're going to just use the Fab Lab logo. So this should be on any of the computers you might use at the Fab Lab. And I can actually use that as a brush as a sort of stamp. Um, and if I just hit it a few times, oops, I have to enable the brush. Here we go. I click that little light next to it to enable it. If I hit this a few times, you can kind of see it. It's hard to see there. It is raising up the Fab Lab out of the ground, the Fab Lab logo. But the other more important thing is to see how this makes a sort of scraggly looking surface. So this looks a little bit more like mountains. Now I probably have this on a little too high because you can see just how much it's burgeoning up here. But this kind of looks more like terrain, right? And I can also do the uh, invert option here, I believe. Let's see if I can do a, whoops, a mountain underneath. Well, that's, that's not doing what I want. That's okay. Anyway, the, the point is that uh, you can make these kind of interesting shapes that might look like a geographic kind of model. You know, look at that. I've got kind of some some uh, edges that are this this kind of 3d print actually might fail see how these these edges are sticking up those are infinitely thin surfaces that would probably break the 3d printer so if you start looking like this that's probably not so good but uh, adding a brush is one interesting way you can adjust your piece uh, the last thing that's notable i'm going to go ahead and do a new sphere here and uh, is that you can adjust your material. And this is just for fun. Uh, 3D print is always gonna be whatever color of plastic or material that you give it, but it's kind of cool to see, you know, you can have this, uh, you know, cool looking sphere thing. And this might add to the theme of what you're doing. Like, you know, if you were gonna do like a sleek alien spaceship, maybe you would do it out of this kind of silver looking material. And that could be a really fun way to make it look interesting. So that's uh, the, basically the overview for the program. Uh, this is obviously just a demo that is limited, but you can do quite a bit with it. So I'd encourage you guys to play around with it, uh, ask us questions. Anybody at the lab should have the basics down on how to use it. Uh, that is, oh, uh, and then let's just go back to the lab assignment. 
just really quickly here to clarify. So I'm, I'm expecting students in the class to use Tinkercad, Sculptress, which is the one I just showed you, and some sort of 3D scanning method. This could be photogrammetry where you seem to gather a bunch of photos or using a Microsoft Connect. Uh, and there are lots of different ways to do this. We're going to allow you to try to experiment. I want you to try all of those three things. You don't have to succeed at all of those things. That's fine. I just want you to play with the tools and software and get a sense of what they're like. One of these things you will 3D print, and it can also be a failed 3D print. So again, this is an exploration and discovery. I've given three prompts here where you can do the cell phone or the uh, you know some sort of artwork to go on your table or a flatware set. Uh, those are all fine prompts, and you could do all of these methods on one prompt. You could try two prompts with different methods. You can mix and match as you choose. It is totally up to you. Uh, just play around and have fun with it. We have lots of resources linked on the page here. And once again, don't be afraid to come in and talk to staff. They will show you how to do the basics for many of these things. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.